morning, gentlemen. In view of the snowballing crisis, the Western fleet has been ordered to put to sea with all dispatch. A single warship of the Indian Navy is definitely a force to reckon with. But its entire fleet, made up of several warships, is a formidable sight. A force that can take on any threat or mission on the high seas. However, the combination of different types of ships and their numbers depends entirely on the mission. The fleet is the sword arm of the Navy and the main instrument for carrying out the primary missions of the Navy. Operation time, 00 hours, 00 minutes. Prepare ship for sea in action. Before a fleet leaves the harbor, a sea in action drill is carried out aboard each ship. Option bridge test communication. During this operation, a thorough check of all equipment and personnel is ensured. Fleet movement out of a well-defended harbor is a well-orchestrated, complex choreography. A safe passage is created before a fleet moves out of the harbor, as the area inside the harbor or the chartered route of the fleet could be infested with mines. And of course, there is always the danger of an enemy submarine or ships lurking along the route. All these threats are first studied and then cleared before the main body moves out. The minesweepers are the first to move and create what is called a swept or a safe channel for the fleet. Minesweepers which uh, we have are made up of special metal. It's an alloy. These ships are able to pass over a mine. This ship is equipped with mine detectors and detonators that prevent mines from exploding within its vicinity. The primary role for the minesweeper is to create a sub channel so that our fleet ships can move out into the harbor safely without any dangers of the mines. The enemy can be expected to deploy mines in the approaches to our harbors since mines are one of the cheapest weapons to damage our ships. There are various types of mines, but certain mines are most commonly used. Mood mines, the acoustic mines and the electromagnetic mines. The first job of the minesweeper is to detect mines. We've got sonars which are fitted in the ship. Two of them are used for mine hunting. Sonar sends out audio waves through the seawater. These waves bounce off submerged objects and send an echo to the receiving station. Highly trained sonar operators can detect and identify submerged objects based on the levels of the echo. This works very effectively in detecting mines moored at different depths. Training 20 degrees tower, sir. Mine contact on bearing 160, depth 40 meters. Once the enemy mines have been detected, the mine sweepers employ countermeasures to destroy these mines and remove the threat to the fleet. For the moored mines, we have got MT1 sweep. These are basically mines which are anchored at the seabed. So we have a wire going astern of the ship. The wire has got cutters as well as have got small explosives. So that particular cutters and the explosive can cut off these wires. These mood mines thereafter come on the surface of the sea. Two mines I did, train two zero, approximate one mile sir. And thereafter we can destroy them by firing on them. HMG LMG, engage. Mine train two zero. Contact every three minutes. Acoustic mines are designed to explode when they come in contact with sound waves created by a moving ship. Minesweepers use an Arthi Dua. To destroy acoustic mines, this equipment is electrically driven and is released about 400 to 500 meters behind the minesweeper. It generates a large amount of artificial noise much more than that of a ship and the acoustic mine explodes after responding to this noise. Electromagnetic mines are programmed to pick up the electromagnetic signature of ships. To deactivate electromagnetic mines, the minesweepers tow a cable behind the ship. Confirm, increase current. Increase current. A high voltage current is passed through this cable, which results in creating an electromagnetic signature much higher than that of the ship. The mine sensors pick up this signature, which seems like that of a ship, and it explodes. 
Mind destroyed, sir. All pushers bridge. Mind destroyed. Mind destroyed. By detecting and destroying mines, the mine sweeping ships prepare a swept or a safe channel, which is usually half a mile in breadth, so that the fleet ships can sail safely out to sea. As the mine sweepers clear the channel, the fleet readies to sail out, and the fleet commander takes up his post on the command platform. The command platform is central to the fleet operations since the fleet commander would control the movement and activities of all the ships from this platform. The command platform is a warship which is well equipped with weapons, sensors and aviation capabilities to meet the demands of fleet operations. In case an aircraft carrier is not available, any of the larger ships, either destroyers or frigates, could be the command platform. If there is any possibility of a surface threat to the fleet ships while they are leaving harbour, the missile boats, which are very strong and potent, may also be used to provide protection to the fleet. The missile boats are very agile and manoeuvrable craft that speed out of the harbour and take up position outside the main channel. This is done to counter any kind of surface threats from the enemy. These boats are armed with four surface-to-surface -surface missiles that have a range of over 80 kilometers and can destroy any types of surface threats. The missile boat is equipped with two engines, providing it with awesome power. The crafts can attain speeds of up to 37 knots, that's nearly 70 kilometers per hour in water. Their high speeds and tremendous firepower make them a very effective offensive platform. Hit first, hit hard and keep hitting. That's our motto. Once the channel is secured and made safe by the minesweepers and missile boats, the fleet readies to move out. The entire Western fleet is sailing out. We are part of that fleet and we'll shortly be leaving harbour in a classical departure operation. Bridge commencing reversal trials, commencing port shaft, slow at port. It is a very technical operation where we are relying implicitly on various people on this ship and other ships in coordinating the operation. Most of the bigger ships of the Indian Navy carry helicopters on board. These helicopters differ in size, based on the dimensions of the landing deck and the operational role of the ship. As the fleet ships leave the harbour, these helicopters take off from their ground base and touch down on their designated ships. Once out of the harbour, the ships of the fleet rendezvous at a predetermined location and come into a formation based on operational requirements. Ships are inherently very mobile units. They can move up to 600 nautical miles in a day and can be moved around as the Navy deems fit. The tremendous firepower of one of the fleet ships is unleashed when an enemy airstrike is detected. Coming up after the break. Fleets, they go out into the vastness of the battle space of the oceans, seek out the enemy far from our shores and destroy it. Stand out of fire! Now! Now! Fire! The fleet has the capabilities across the spectrum of conflict from low intensity maritime operations to the full spectrum of conventional warfare if it comes to that. The fleet is essentially a well-oiled war fighting machine always geared up to undertake any task, any time any place. The fleet usually consists of a versatile range of warships that can operate in various scenarios. The destroyers bring in immense weapon power and aviation resources. Frigates bring with them stealth and speed. The amphibious ships add reach and strike capabilities. The enormous fuel tankers enable the fleet to sail on the high seas for long periods, which is also known as the blue water potential of a navy, the aircraft carrier. The pride of any navy brings with it tremendous strike capabilities, 
deep into enemy territory. A fleet is therefore capable of dealing with any threat from the air, surface, or underwater. Our strengths are in our ability to operate diverse platforms from amphibious capability to ASW capability to anti-air, anti-surface. We can undertake uh, multifarious tasks at sea. The sophisticated radars on board the fleet ship INS Talwar pick up the enemy planes from beyond the visual range. Radar Frigat is used against an air threat. Against a surface threat, we have Radar Garpoon. Radars emit radio waves that travel in the air and hit objects, which then travel back to the base transmitter. The strike on bearing of 330-45. Once a radar contact is identified as an inbound hostile airstrike, an alarm is sounded around the ship. Hands to action stations. Hands to action stations. Action stations means that the ship is under threat and all personnel need to take position at designated battle stations. All the weapons and equipment are manned and ready for action. To deal with any air threats, the ship is equipped with different types of systems and weapons. Long-range surface-to-air missiles, short-range missiles, short-range guns, and finally, the medium and light machine guns. The first weapon that we'll use against incoming strike would be a surface-to-air missiles, the medium-range surface-to-air missiles. They are capable of taking multiple targets. Stand out of fire! Now! Now! Fire! The second line of defense are the short-range missiles and guns. Arm 1 Echo I, sir. Assign second aircraft on bearing 330 to Puma. If the enemy manages to evade the short-range missiles and guns, the ship's crew then fires the light and heavy machine guns to create a wall of bullets to neutralize the threat. All four aircraft, destroy. In modern-day warfare, it is extremely important to deploy measures to avoid detection by enemy radar and other surveillance equipment. INS Talwar, a stealth frigate of the Indian Navy, has the capabilities to deceive enemy radar. The Talwar class of frigates are known all over the world as one of the best of its class in stealth. Stealth by virtue of its shape, color, kind of radar signature that it gives. The ship's design is what makes it a stealth warship. Its hull has many angles and curves, with no flat surfaces whatsoever. Due to which, the radio waves of the enemy's radars bounce off there, by creating a false image of a very small ship, or a fishing vessel on the radar screen, for the operator. The stealth feature of the INS Talwar is further enhanced by the application of a special paint which absorbs radio waves and generates a confusing radar picture for enemy radar operators. In order to avoid detection by the sonars of the enemy submarines, the Talwar has some other unique features as well that reduce noise levels, thereby giving out a low acoustic signature. Its stealth capabilities, its top speed and impressive firepower make the INS Talwar one of the most powerful warships in the Indian Navy. A normal railway uh, express is powered by a 4,000 horsepower engine, uh, which means uh, this ship is propelled by around uh, uh, more than 10 uh, express train engines. To enhance the blue water capabilities of the fleet, it is very essential that the ships are refueled while out of the high seas. This is done with the help of the Indian Navy's tankers, INS Jyoti and INS Aditya. Refueling, when out on the high seas, is a complex maneuver. The ship's crew has to be alert and vigilant at all times to avoid mishaps, loss of life and property. There are two ways of refueling a ship. Stern refueling and beam refueling. In beam refueling, 
two ships draw alongside the tanker and once connected to the main hose, begin refueling. In stern refueling, the ship draws up behind the tanker and connects to the hose that trails behind the tanker. There could be many ships that need refueling at the same time and this is done by tying up the ships alongside the tanker and then proceeding to fuel them. Our four contestants are going on board a premier naval destroyer but will they be able to make it through the tasks that await them? Crossing over was such a thrilling experience. It's looking dangerous right now. Coming up after the break. Morning, gentlemen. In view of the snowballing crisis, the Western fleet has been ordered to put to sea with all dispatch. Zero zero hours, zero zero minutes. Prepare ship for sea in action. Before a fleet leaves the harbor, a sea in action drill is carried out aboard each ship. Option bridge test completion. During this operation, a thorough check of all equipment and personnel is ensured. We can take on any threat or mission on the high seas. However, the combination of different types of ships and their numbers depends entirely on the mission. The fleet is the sword arm of the Navy and the main instrument for carrying out the primary missions of the Navy. Operation time. Fleet movement out of a well-defended harbor is a well-orchestrated, complex choreography. A safe passage is created before a fleet moves out of the harbor, as the area inside the harbor or the chartered route of the fleet could be infested with mines. And of course, there is all... A single warship of the Indian Navy is definitely a force to reckon with. But its entire fleet, made up of several warships, is a formidable sight. 